young singer named Justin Moore. We don't do a whole lot of bullshitting up here. We just get up here and play country music. The Justin Moore Podcast is sponsored by Bobcat. Visit them at bobcat.com. Well, it's working now. Hey, hey, check one, two. Welcome back, everybody, to the Justin Moore Podcast. I'm your old buddy, old pal, J.R. The Handler. And with me today, as always, the namesake of this podcast, your favorite singing Razorback, Mr. Justin Cole Moore. What's up, J.M.? <laughs> I'm so frustrated by computers. Uh, I have no idea. My computer's being an asshole today. Um, but uh, well, mine's no, it's good, <laughs> good to be here and... Uh, uh, back back with you after being off for a week uh last week we we took a week off and uh, i don't even recall why to be honest with you i think we were just super busy and on golf the road tournament. and golf tournament that's right yeah so we'll get into the golf tournament stuff man what a um great success uh that was um i want to thank uh all the people involved with the St. Jude and, and, and the artists that came out and, um, there were a number of them and, um, and we're a part of that. And, you know, we raised, uh, 300,000 last year for St. Jude, uh, in, in our inaugural, uh, version of, of the Justin Moore St. Jude benefit golf tournament and, uh, hit the 400 mark this year, 400,000. So, pretty miraculous when you think of a um you know this idea that came about a few years ago now and it got pushed back and pushed back due to to covid obviously we were supposed to start it i believe in 20 if i'm not mistaken and uh, finally got to have it last year after changing the date what seemed like 10 times um uh, and to see it become you know as successful as it has in just a very brief time is pretty amazing so it was good yeah i had a i had a great time it was good to see all our buddies want to say um shout out to chase rice for coming coming through yeah. and uh pulling out the show i know uh um, we had a couple other people lined up with some travel schedules and illnesses and all that kind of stuff it ended up being um for the second round of the um um, which y'all did a, like a writer's round thing. We had one round and we were going to have two rounds, but you and Chase did the second one. Man, that was fun. He, he what a good guy. I've hung out with Chase a few times yeah. over the years, but never as long as uh, we did that weekend. And um, him and his team, good, good people. It was a good time. And um, yeah, everybody who came, I mean, it was a great time. Got to meet uh, probably the future governor of Arkansas. Yeah. Uh, Miss Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Got to get a pick with her. You know, I had to, yeah, I don't, I'm not one to oh, gurn, yeah. but, but sometimes you got to get one, get buddy. Fan, I, fan girl up. I had to. Yeah. I've been a huge I, yeah, fan. Me too, man. I am too. I, yeah. Dude, it I, was, um, she, I loved was, her when she was at the White House, man. They, somebody just tried to give her some crap and she just like, no, actually, boom, boom, boom. Here's some facts. Next. Yeah. And I just, I yeah, loved her bitch. demeanor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she just she was, was like, she, no, yeah. you're wrong. Here's why. Okay, I'm not calling next. her a bitch, by the way. I'm saying she yeah. would say that to people. Yeah. Um, like, make like that I'm Leslie Jones, bitch. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, she was great, man. I, I mean, she got, you know, regardless of your politics, because uh, I have friends on both sides of the aisle, as do you, yeah. and still love them, even if I don't agree with them. But she did that job and did it well. I yep. mean, she got just peppered with questions after question after question, and uh, she didn't take no crap off nobody. Yeah, but yeah, she's a. I mean, I don't, I can't even imagine anybody competing with her in the, you know, governor race here. I mean, it, she's obviously uh, well liked here, and her dad did a good job here as as governor, and she's gonna be tough to beat, that's for sure. But. Um, yeah, it was good to meet her, um, and like you said, Chase, man, for him to – look, we all have uh, 100,000 things we could be doing on a daily basis, in particular as an artist. I mean, your time is limited off and home, and um, we get asked to do a lot of stuff, just quite honestly, and you, you want to do as much as you can, whether it be, you know, go play in people's so, uh, golf tournaments to raise money or – their you know turkey fry or their yeah, whatever event. yeah 
you just can't um uh, very often and uh the fact that he he made the effort to not only come down but uh, play the show with me and um play the tournament not only him but uh all the all the artists um you're gonna yeah. have to help me remember I, I yeah, joe, well, Nick, yeah. joe nichols came and played uh the the, the uh golf and i mean that's a five and a half six hour drive for him just to come and play around the golf to help me out right in st jude um and then yeah the first Ad, round of the, adam, of the yeah adam the great adam hambrick uh, uh i think yeah. he's, been, he's been a guest on this podcast and one of yeah. our buddies and a fellow arkansan had two <laughs> new guys who've done some of the shows on the country on it tour with us already the yeah. reeves brothers which i'm yep. i'm i love these guys these yeah. i mean oh my gosh i love these guys so I much i feel like they, they are what you would be if you were an artist yeah, they are. Split them, you know, split like, me in half, and make me some. That's yeah. me. Yeah, I love those guys. Um, and then um, also our buddy, who is actually going to be our our podcast guest today, uh, Scott yeah. Stevens. Um, not yeah. an Arkansan. He's actually, I think he's an Alabamian like me. Um, but Scott was on the, that first round of it too. So uh, yeah, and and he played golf with actually Rich and Cody and some of those guys. And I think you guys played a little My better. My cousin, than they did. I think. That's right, Brock. Brock. Oh yeah, I heard yeah. some stories about him and Brock hanging out. Oh yeah. <laughs> Care to divulge? Scott, you there? You got us, brother? Bro, I think I got you. Can you? Yay! Hear me? There he is. Yeah. Hell Ladies yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, nice everybody, welcome to the podcast, Mr. Bro, Scott Stevens. What's up, bro? Let's go, dude. What's up, fellas? Man, I just joined in when you were talking about your cousin Brock, bro, who yeah. I just played <laughs> golf with. It down in Arkansas at the St. Jude, uh, the Justin yeah. Moore St. Jude benefit, bro. Yeah, you uh, got any stories you want to divulge? Dude, I fucking love that guy. I thought he was so much fun, bro. <laughs> I thought, like, he's dude, a great guy. He's like my yeah, brother. He can smash it too. Yeah, dude. He, uh, we took a few of his drives in that in that scramble, and uh, he was so funny, man. We were all in stitches. I don't even know that we finished the whole round of golf to be honest with you dude it, how uh, did you play do you play do you play much man i uh i wish i played more i'll tell you that that's yeah. my goal that'd be dope eventually so you you get... have played uh, a lot of your life though i mean you've played a lot of golf over the oh years. yeah oh yeah man i have uh spent a lot of time embarrassing my dad growing up so he was the one that got nice. me got me on a golf well, yeah, course you, man you probably don't have a lot of time i mean but between being an artist and writing and recording and doing all your own music and producing and you have children you have a wife and children got a bunch and of on top of that you're an, you're an attorney you're a practicing attorney so i mean yeah you probably don't have a lot of time to do much else uh the, with, dude, with that schedule it, it's a pretty slim schedule right now, bros. I'll tell you that. But I ain't complaining, man. I'd way rather have that problem than the than the than a shitty twenty twenty problem. You know what I'm saying? So, yes. Yeah, I, I told somebody that same exact thing the other day, man. It's just like I, I I complain about being so busy and I don't have time for this or that or you know I'm whatever. And I thought, man. You butthole. I mean, you were complaining <laughs> two and a half years ago because you didn't have anything to do. I'm yeah. like, it's it's got to be one or the other, man. Right? I mean, maybe maybe a split the difference would be nice, but they, a little go. split the difference you know, but, would be nice. I, I'm with but, you on yeah. that, bro. I uh, dude, I uh, so so through that whole like you know world shuts down. I signed my deal, dude. My first record deal in my entire life. <laughs> Gen, uh february 2020 in march oh my god dude everything shuts down so it was your fault it was we my just fault, figured out bro. what's up they let you, you in crashed yeah, the here whole we go. damn the market man. dude that's it put a crack right through the whole uh center of the system dude but it, you know it was uh I, I i'm still not complaining dude it's my journey and it doesn't surprise me that that's my journey so uh long story I, short i didn't realize it was literally that uh bang bang i guess dude crazy like right now yeah. we're just picking up with stuff that we were planning to do like then right and so it's i mean you get it you guys both get it it's, it's crazy dude yeah. but seeing it all like come to pass dude in god's time and i just kind of right. had to let go ride the wave bro that's it yeah. and uh that's but it. but through that whole shutdown dude i started practicing law a little bit and uh 
and uh now music's back to popping and uh they think they're <laughs> Things are popping. Pra- I, I, that's a, I love how you say that. Like it's you flippantly <laughs> say that. Like I, I started practicing law a little bit. Like you I did. Like yeah. you picked up. Yeah. Like you, you learned know, how to crochet or fly, something. Uh, <laughs> flies for uh, fishing or something. Like, yeah. like I started. I started jogging a little Dude, bit. Dude, man, uh, it was. It was. Y'all started know. practicing law a little bit. Did, what bro. the hell does that I even went, mean? I went down to the courthouse and uh, now I had done it when I first moved to town. That's what. That's kind of what I did. How I made ends meet. I did. Uh, you know, if you can't afford an attorney, one will be appointed to represent you. Well, the public defender who usually takes all those cases can't take all those cases because they're so. You're much. better call Saul, is who you uh, are. A, a little bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. Better right? call Scott, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's, yeah, better call. A little bit, it's like that, and and then uh, I mean, you fast forward, and I was um, again another blessing, bro. I was able to uh, get us uh, from one stone to this stone. You know what I mean? Cross that bridge of no shows, no, yeah. no uh, touring at all. And uh, they did allow me to provide for my family and get me to this point, and yeah, so, and so still keep you and Tim busy recording and writing and colla- and and creating and stuff too. That whole thing, that whole time was yeah, just just recording, creating, yeah. So, how did you wind up becoming an attorney? Like out of high school? I mean, I'm I'm very curious because I've never met one like you. Dude, I've never met <laughs> one like You know what I mean? Bro. Like, well, I know exactly well, I was going to ask mean, something. I don't mean that bad. That. I mean, it's a god. It's actually a good thing. I was going to say because we've known Scott for a while now because we've been buddies and because since he's been yeah. in town working with Pete, our man, your manager Justin. Yeah. So we've known Scott for a while. But uh, may, some of our listeners may not that haven't uh, been to show or, or, or gotten gotten uh, on the train yet, which I encourage everyone to. So yeah, maybe start there. How did the train leave the station for you? High school? How was that? Into music and law and Nashville and to where we are now. <coughs> Bro, let's see. And is I, your uh, wife sorely disappointed because she thought she was marrying a practicing attorney? <laughs> oh, and you, now you're just one of us idiots. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. dude. I, uh, I mean, jokes on her for real, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. I had that. Uh, I had that firm job lined up for me right out of law school, and I uh, started it. I did two weeks of it, and it was just. Uh, that was the first time in my life I'd ever had a real job other than playing songs. You know. And, uh, oh, my God, it was the most boring thing I had ever done. And wow. uh, I knew immediately that I couldn't do it. And so I told her, babe, I was supposed to grow up, but instead I'm moving to Nashville and I got to keep playing music. I'll never not be playing music. So, uh, wow. But, yeah, so so fair warning, she got it. You know what I'm saying? So, right, so yeah. But uh, she's, a, she's a champ, man. She's a good sport for putting up with my shit. But, uh uh, so yeah, where, man. where was high, where was high school for you? High school where, where was did this, where did that all start? I did I did uh, I did like four high schools in uh, almost four years. So it was a, a little wow. bit of uh, it was that my dad uh, is a consultant was a consultant. So it was like just moving around, following his 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 job, and uh, I ended up graduating in uh, in Illinois and. Uh, wow. But uh, all of my family was back in Knoxville. All of my extended family were back in Knoxville. So everybody ended up back in Knoxville. They're actually in Strawberry Plains. And, uh, oh, that was cool, by the way, Justin. Bro, we, uh, we just played uh, my hometown. That was insane, bro. That was insane. Yeah, I didn't no, I realize just, that. I just, I I just got way I'm off track. Now. Yeah, dude. That was yeah. so- so damn cool man i like uh all my family came cousins came people i hadn't seen in years church crew nice. college crew that was like a like a real like fruition moment playing at the knoxville civic auditorium dude yeah. i mean it's yeah, crazy was cool and you, man it, we, and you well, almost we, didn't make it because of the because of construction and wrecks on the interstate, dude, you, was, you almost didn't make the dream gig. It, it, it was a little bit <laughs> it was a little bit dicey for a little bit, but uh, it, we got there. Yeah, yes. yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. I didn't. I didn't know that. So that's that's cool. But uh, it was cool, man. So it was special for just, people that are listening. It was Justin's show that it was our show that they let me on mm-hmm. somehow, and uh, and damn, was it cool, bro. It was neat. Everybody. Yeah. Well, you're on it. some more, ain't you? I think we're doing upcoming one in July, 
Uh, and then, yeah, I think that's it. We had to bring yeah. a little of the power of the gorilla to get the tour rolling again, baby. Let's go. How <laughs> was uh? Where'd y'all where'd y'all head to next? Didn't you didn't you go to Maryland or somewhere? West uh, Virginia. Which West you were with Virginia. us in West Virginia. I was yeah. with you in that West show Virginia. With us too. That was dope. And then we went to Pennsylvania. We played uh, actually a really cool uh, yeah. casino up in Ben Salem outside of Philly. Oh, nice. How was that? Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Dude, that West Virginia. Yeah, it was crowd good. Was... I thought the West Virginia crowd was really good too. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, so you mentioned you got to always play music. So, like for me, I didn't start playing music, like playing music, playing music until I was, I don't know, seventeen, eighteen. You know, it was a little later than most people. You yeah, know, I grew up singing in church. Yeah, me too. That was pretty much because I was forced to by my parents. You know, like go do it, sing a special. That's what we called them. You know. And so I, I'm curious, were you much earlier than that? Man, and... so here's a, uh, in the beginning, my dad, oh, yeah. oh, he always had uh, guitars around, bro, like hanging up. And so, and he, he had stories. He came in like uh, in the Ohio area, came up in the Ohio area when Ohio was like the mecca for classic rock. You know what I mean? And uh, played with Joe Walsh back in like when when they were in high school. Oh wow! Kind of shit. Yeah. So he was a musician too. Was yeah, he was a musician. My dad, yeah. And uh, man, I actually uh, started telling this story. Uh, you know, recently we we took a song to radio, so I have to tell this story uh, a yeah. good bit. You know, you know the drill. It's like who are oh, you? Yeah. Where you come from? And I'm <clears> like, man, yeah. So I picked up a guitar because my dad had guitars, and then I went to school because my dad you know they valued school and i'm like man, maybe i need to talk to a therapist about <laughs> doing anything that i think my dad would be proud of and that, that, that is really like looking back i feel like that's that's like an honest moment that's what it is man but uh yeah so he always had guitars and uh and uh by the time i came around he was just playing music at church and whatnot he was he wasn't he never really followed any rock star dream, so to speak. Right. Uh, but played with the talking heads, uh, which I always thought that was dope. Um, just like mm -hmm. that classic rock thing. Like he, he was like in, in the, on the pulse, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. uh, so I picked up a guitar amongst all that moving uh, music became a thing for me, a little uh, therapeutic kind of, <clears throat> I connected with it. It was constant. And, uh, just as much as continuing go to go to school was so uh, that whole time I was like playing bars in Knoxville while I was going to UT Knoxville, uh, and then I was uh, did the same thing at Alabama Law School. I just kind of kept going to school. I never really had it clear like moment like this is the time go to Nashville or this is what. Uh, but until I graduated law school, and all of a sudden it was very clear that like I could do nothing else. All I wanted to do was make cool shit yeah did did you i had this and i went to college for two weeks uh <laughs> and that's all I, you, you and that's you cool were, too dude. you were shit. uh you joined a firm and stayed two weeks i stayed in college two weeks uh, i stayed but, seven years <laughs> <laughs> he spent as much time as he he, he could have been an attorney yeah uh Definitely. he was there so long but <laughs> Um, no, so, but for me, man, it was, I constantly, it's all I, it's all I thought about was trying to play music, moving to Nashville, giving this a shot. It was like, I don't know, the first crush you have, or I don't know if that's a great analogy or not. It's like all you can think about, or your first kiss, all you can think about. And that's the way music was to me at that time. I was you know 18 and i'm like constantly i'm sitting in like a, a lit class or something and and i was good in school uh not past the bar good but you know fairly intelligent sure. and yeah. did okay and uh I, I mean i can't i can't pay attention to the professor i have don't, don't i don't give a shit what he's had has to say I, I and i'm like that. i'm just like thinking about lyrics or thinking about song titles or I don't know. I wonder if it was like that for you, man, or if you can relate to that. Oh, absolutely, I can, dude. I, uh, <laughs> I uh, 
Justin, right. he was at Alabama. He had he had so much power of championshipness going through him. No, he could do all. He could do both at the same time. I'm just no, telling you. No, no. So basically, cause all because am I right? All your dreams came true when you went to Alabama, and then you, <laughs> then you realized you could be a champion. That, that's right. That's what. I, that's all I heard anyway. Listen, Jared the Handler and I do have a, a little roll tide in common, so well, we can do. get that out of the way. Sometimes you just gotta. Sometimes you just gotta get that away. I'm sorry, Justin. I know this is no. Show, it's all bro. good. Thanks for having me. Hey, on. we all bleed red. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's but it. you just said you went to Knoxville. I did. So I, uh, I kind of like uh, split right. And he realized the they were losers. So no, I can't. I, can't. I, uh, I lived about <laughs> ten really. years of my life well, growing the, up. The Tennessee listeners just left. Yeah, um, yeah. See, that's how it is. You're hated by both sides. So I mean, and that's how it's kind of always been, man. But I've, uh, so I grew <laughs> up. I, I spent about ten years in Decatur, Alabama. Uh, uh, of my life, so I had family down there. Still have family down there, and uh, and through one way or another, man, it just ended up where I'm in both cities. Uh, family in both cities, ties to both places. I love both schools. I grew up going to both like <laughs> basketball games and football. This was when Alabama wasn't winning, if you can remember that right. far back, man. Uh, yeah. And, I uh, think you and I are close to the same age. How old are you? Thirty six. Okay, I'm a couple years older, but yeah, I do remember you talking. You know, what early two thousands? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah dude. late nineties, early two thousands. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly right. And uh, and uh, but man, you know, <laughs> ultimately, bro, I, I'll go with. I'm a, I'm cool with whatever. Like yeah. it's cool. Yeah, it's you, cool. I that's a, your personality, though. Yeah, I mean, you're you're an easy going you know happy guy i mean i've never seen you without you smiling um i walk around like a grumpy old man most of the time um, man but but yeah so back to your did you have something jr yeah i was just gonna say i'm Sorry. the same way i'm giving him a hard time but that's just because of football <clears throat> rivalry i tell you that not he ain't no is. he ain't the same way no he, no he, he's not Tennessee the same. slips Tennessee's up and, not. Whips up on Alabama, which ain't gonna happen. Uh, I don't imagine, but it won't be as beautiful. Yeah, you'll well, right see now, it's be, a beautiful. I, y'all's beautiful reaction city. would definitely be different. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but right now it's a beautiful place. I love the people there. I had I had a good time when we were there. I I love that area uh, right now. But uh, football, yeah, it's just one of our <laughs> Full of crap. them and Auburn. That's our traditional rivals. You that's know, it. that's like y'all in Texas or now yeah. I guess LSU kind of now with you guys yeah. and Ole Miss. So. Uh, that's just our yeah. traditional one, so that they, everybody gets it. They they gonna they give me crap too. So anyway, Man, I, I feel I, you oh, yeah. on that, Scott. I, I'm I'm yeah. just a mutt, bro. I'm a mutt. I'm a, a damn stray dog. I'm a you know. I, it's just it's just what it is. But I I feel like I think the the goofy ass smile kind of I found that. Well, at least in my life, when I come across, so I was at court uh, earlier, man, and there's this one courtroom where everybody just seems like they're pissed off. And uh, I don't know, man. I feel like something about the opposite of that is good for me in my life. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like, that kind makes of sense, sense, man. Steering so the other are direction. You, uh, so, are you still seeking your dad's approval, or did you work on that? We've never been closer than we are right now, man. And I'm proud of that. And I'm proud to say that. And uh, but always, you know. Yeah. I you don't know? think that's a bad thing. I mean, you kind of mentioned it in the. You know, maybe you should talk to somebody, but I don't. I think we all kind of are are similar in that, you know. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, dude. I just, uh, what, I mean, yeah, I mean, inside whether you want to admit it or not, whether they're not, whether you even like them or not, you're still trying to do it. That's it, man. Um, and then it became about you, my but, kids a little bit. So like now, I'm just like, man, I just want I want my kids to be proud of my music. I want my kids to be proud of my grind and how hard I've tried. To make my dreams come true, <laughs> yeah, follow, follow the, and let car. them know they can dream big too, and go for it, and Hell go yeah. all, go full tilt boogie, and get into for it. Sure. Yeah, just do it. Hell yeah! Well, you talked about you talked about your dad um, having those classic rock influences, and that was kind of the, what what he was, which we all loved. I mean, that was just a great era of music, as we all know. But what were some of your stuff when you were in your impressionable age, like when you first started buying your own CDs or tapes? Which you, I remember, you probably uh, y'all are probably weren't quite on tapes. I had a, I started with tapes, and then it wasn't long after that it was CDs for me. But uh, what were some of that early stuff you were into? How did that music and that you were listening to evolve? And 
and once you started trying to make your own songs mm. and all that stuff. So what were your influences kind of and how did they progress as, as you aged? Bro, you mentioned tapes. I had uh, this Elvis Greatest Hits on tape, dude. Wore that thing out, bro. Nice. Uh, <laughs> I remember the first tape I actually bought with my own money. I was probably, I don't know, 12 or something. Was uh, Get a Grip. Uh, it was the uh, uh, Aerosmith "Get a Grip" yep. was nice. the, the, the album. It was it had the cow on the front and the pierced udder. <laughs> yes. Y'all remember that? I know exactly what you're and my about. mom's like, "What is that?" And I'm like, "No, nah, it's just I love the music." But anyway, <laughs> great. I think oh, mine dude. was Bon Jovi, New Jersey. <laughs> nice. When, when I was That's about seven, bro. Yep. That's I remember cool, that, dude. and the other one was a. Uh, Long necks and short stories, Mark Chestnut. Nice. And I wore that Joker out. That's legit, bro. Other than, man, I had some, uh, I had some CCM uh, cassette tapes. My sisters, I I grew up with two older sisters, and uh, and then I came along, and I was a little bit of the, the, a little bit rebelling, going against the grain, and listen to this kind of music. Check out this music, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of thing, but. Then it sure. evolved into so was anybody else musical or just your dad? My family kind of and yourself. My my mom and dad both kind of kind of <laughs> were musical. My my dad for sure musical. My mom, you know, she sang, taught me harmonies, that kind of thing. She was always she would always sing yeah. a harmony for some reason, and now and that just like became something that was ingrained in me, dude. So yeah, yeah, and so, oldies, man, you know, singing. Yeah, so your your music. JR and I have had many conversations about it and trying to, and I mean this as a huge compliment, by the way. I Thank genuinely you, do. Thank um, you. Trying to describe it to people is is somewhat difficult. Yeah. It, I Because it's, I don't know that I've heard anything like it, which it, to me is the highest of compliments. I, I, you, I mean, it's almost like you've created. You think every song's been written, every type of music's been played, or whatever, and then somebody like you comes along and you, you're going, I don't. I mean, it's this and it's this and it's a little bit of that and a little bit of that and I, I don't know. I hope you take that as a compliment because that's that is the sentiment. Yeah, that's why I was asking about the influences to see if there was some way you could put a couple of these together that kind of (laughs) would make me think, oh, yeah, now I see how he got to that point. Yeah, bro. Well, thank you. Thank you, dude. Thank you for talking about my music. That's cool, man. That's cool even to know that you're talking about my music, dude. It's uh, it's something that, uh, man, a few years ago, I I, I just kind of had this epiphany kind of thing. And uh, I was just like, what am I doing? Just trying to do what everybody else is doing. And trying to do, uh, trying to be as good as they are doing their thing, and you know? then I somehow, some, some, somewhere along the line, realized that uh, they're doing their things already. So I, I better do mine or bigger right. something else out, man. And so, uh, and it, so then it became. I say, you know, and you guys will figure this out about me eventually. I'm a pretty <clears throat> spiritual guy. I sometimes can go down a rabbit hole with you on on some of that stuff, especially if we're. Enjoying some cannabis at some point. Yeah. And together. But uh, but uh, I think it's a calling, man. I, I think, uh, uh, and, and I think for me, man, something I'm most proud of is like whether it's wrong, right, whatever it is, man, I feel like I followed the, and, and that, that explains why it sounds a little different. But then it's also like, it's, 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 Joe Walsh, it's Elvis, like these influences. I'm not saying at all that I'm comparing myself to them. I like the Joe Walsh trying, reference. Trying to explain mm-hmm. it. Thank you, dude. It's like this groove thing. I've got this like uh, uh, rhythm thing that I can't get. Like I can't get, like something about rhythm and me are connected. And then it's country music, dude. Like I fell mm-hmm. in love hard with country music, dude. In yeah. fact, before I play uh, our song, Sound of Country Music, let's yeah. go. Uh, in our which set. is a, a, t- a lot of fun for for those out there uh listening that are unaware scott and i did a song together um that it, it was it on an album is it going to be on an album like, what's the story with it yeah uh yeah it comes out 
Friday, baby. Yes. Uh, the day after the day after this ep- this podcast airs, Scott's new album will drop. And I know there's a grad track or two uh, 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 that they uh, grad track they've they've put out a, a song, one or two songs already off the album, maybe. But uh, the album itself will come out this Friday. Yes. Um, May thirteenth. Uh, yep. It's, I mean, as soon as the day after this this podcast airs, let's yeah, go. Yeah, and that's cool. The sound of country music is the sound of country music. Sound of country music goes. The sound of country music. Yep, is uh, the song that Scott and I did together. It's super groovy, cool, just well written. I I I hear, and maybe I'm wrong, but I hear a little petty in in you as well. Um, Hell which yeah, man. Petty's one of my favorite all time. Thank you. Uh, but uh, that's interesting. You mentioned Joe Walsh. I haven't thought about that, but it makes sense. Yeah, man. It's got uh, uh, I mean, all of the, the 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 country music that we all grew up on. I feel like and love. Dude, I, I fell in love with that, man. I remember going to school like my mom playing uh, Tim McGraw. Like we're talking like. Uh, uh, don't take the girl dude oh my god you know yeah. all of those all those staples dude all like uh um and then i and then i kind of got into like the western side of like the merle stuff and i got into uh johnny cash kind of on my own man i kind of ventured off the beaten path and discovered music i just uh fell in love with music and the country is just country's in our blood dude i can't not sing mm. country music because i sing right. country music if i'm singing country music like whatever yeah. it sounds like i don't know i i do i do have this <clears throat> vision in my head of what i'm trying to make it sound like but like it's country you know well i think yeah. you hit on something that makes sense and makes it sound this sounds overly simplistic at least i know what i i think i'm trying to say <laughs> um is it, it makes sense to me that you mentioned that you, and I don't want to put words in your mouth. I'm paraphrasing here, but uh, melody driven or groove driven. Um, I think you said melody, uh, but uh, but anyway, because <clears throat> especially that, that song certainly, dude. yeah, it, that certainly um, affects uh, you know the way your records sound um and as a whole your artistry I, I think every one of your songs has a good groove and you know where i can kind of get i can get kind of infatuated with the lyric and beat the lyric up all day on a song i'm writing and uh i should probably uh yeah maybe insert a little more groove in there like just give yourself over to the group whatever dude your show man your songs bro i'm gonna i'm gonna take a moment and pump you up a little bit dude but it's some honest stuff dude your songs your whole show is like song after song after song you're just like whoa 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 great song great song great song great song and it's just that for the whole time, uh-huh. and I'm like, by the end of it, dude, I'm like, dude, you should be proud. <laughs> of Thanks, man. That and you like in your repertoire and your history, whatever. Uh, that good good music sticks around, dude. That's how I'm trying to leave a legacy. I want I want to be known for some good music, dude. And that's a great quote. Yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate the compliment. Um, we've enjoyed we've enjoyed um, a, a lot of success, and I don't know what to attribute it to, but I'm certainly thankful for it. So, but thank you. It's something about that, uh, you obsessing over the lyric. It's something about you thinking, well, maybe I should give into the melody. And, dude, you're just following your, your groove. And how I, I tend to think we know ourselves better than we give ourselves credit. Yeah, no, I agree with that for sure. And I think once you, once you, it may take you a while to learn that, but once you do, that's really when you can be the best version of yourself as an artist or whatever it is you do what are you um, doing uh what's the word you used honest scott yeah, i'd say that's yeah. about both of you guys have that's an honest quality you're not trying to fit in a box you're just doing what you do you know what i mean both yeah. of you guys are you getting to create these days justin are you uh getting in the studio and writing room much or where are you yeah at? we actually just finished an album that'll be out I, I don't know man i would guess early fall um but i think it's 
I think it's some really cool stuff. I think some really clever ideas. A um, couple duets on it that I'm excited about. So nice. I don't know. I'm done with my stuff. They're mixing it now. So, I mean, it's pretty much good to go. But that's awesome, when, I don't dude. know. That's awesome, I don't, dude. And that's above my pay grade, as I mean, you know. You know, I as know, an man. artist, we're I, usually the last to know what's going to happen. I know. That's, happen. that's what I'm saying. Sometimes you just got to let go and ride the wave, dude. I can't imagine. Like, what number record is this for you? It'd be my seventh studio album, but I, awesome. if you consider, like, I don't know, greatest hits and that, those kinds of things, probably live album. I don't know, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, live album, nine or ten. Oh, the Ryman like album, that. dude. That album rock. Mm-hmm. Thanks, man. Yeah, that was That's fun. Incredible. We, I didn't realize. Um, I didn't realize until we did that that people usually do two or three nights to get a live album, and we just had that one night obviously so it was either you know we bring in all this equipment and this stuff to, to record it uh whatever that stuff is and uh it's like all right we'll get one shot at this hopefully yeah. it's, it's yeah one take right. it, it's not a dress rehearsal yeah, yeah there was no yeah. uh, let's run the song again either it was just one shot mm-hmm. at each that's yeah. incredible so bro. i was i was really proud of that album I, and you know this as well as i do scott in particular guitar players but pretty much anybody in my band uh they they think everything's terrible they don't ever think any recording of them sounds good you know so and so didn't get he didn't get my amp mic'd properly and it sounds this or that or i don't and they were all over the top happy about it and i'm like are y'all sick or something i mean That's so dope, anyway I, we were proud of that as a band yeah and that ain't easy to do, dude. Y'all, y'all, y'all are tight. Y'all are like tight in a way. I think our guitarists have crushes on each other too, man. Uh, <laughs> Tim and Problem. Raj, bro. Uh, that that's pretty common occurrence out there. You get them all. Oh, what kind of pedal you got? Uh, oh man, Ooh. bro. They're both two of the best <laughs> guitar players I've I've ever like played. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty yeah. incredible, dude. We recorded that Knoxville show actually, talking like, and I haven't even heard it yet. So oh, I'm did like, you? Oh, wow. I'm like, oh god, I hope that was pretty good. You're pretty particular, yeah. from what I I think Pete told me about like, m- m- you're hands on as far as mixing and stuff, aren't you? Yeah, I'm pretty hands on. Or am I making that up? <clears throat> no, no, no. That's it. I uh, I uh, I get. <clears throat> I, I like to be in the room. Like I, I'll let, I'll let whoever's mixing get a get get a solid grasp on their their thing with it and or if i'm closer you know real close relationship with them i'll go mix like first i'll just sit in there with them but i like to be in there i do i do have several mixes uh uh, it's an obsession (laughs) is that is that something you could see at some point um with other artists and stuff maybe wearing that producer hat dude that'd be sick that would be awesome uh he Sanders, I'm um, I'm still trying to talk him into let me do one with him. He's uh, uh yeah, there uh, you go. He's on the record. I know too. he's looking, isn't he? Yeah, I think so. And uh, he's uh, uh he's on the record. You're on the record. A girl named Farron Rachel's a real good buddy of mine. She's oh, on yeah. the record. Farron, Farron's awesome. Oh yeah, yeah she's JR, awesome. You know Farron, yeah. yeah, she's great songwriter too. She's yeah. awesome. Yeah, she's rocking. We do this like uh you know uh this duet that's like uh it's like a real like throwback real like 1960s kind of thing um oh cool yeah it's, it's did you write it all scott wrote it all uh is that what you just asked yeah yeah there uh yeah uh at least was a co-writer on 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 all the songs and and partly dude like some of me would like like to let go uh at some point um <clears throat> moving forward like if i connect with the right producer and i'll always be a co-producer on everything i feel like because i have a very kind of clear uh goal i guess but in some yeah. but some of my some of my obsession and not wanting to let go of anything with this <laughs> record particularly is because it's like nobody really knew what it sounded like except whatever i was going for you know what i mean yeah it was so up here yeah in your head so, yeah so partly yeah. it was just like me figuring it out dude you know yeah, that, well, that's cool. I, and I ask because I, I'm kind of the opposite. I, now I'm very vocal on uh, 
in the studio when we're tracking i'm heavily involved and i know what i want to hear you know what parts are you know this lick or you know this instrument doing this and that one doing that um but as far as post recording it and stuff like i'm i don't i'm not one of these guys that'll go in and sing a line a hundred times trying to get it exactly right i know some guys are are, are like that I, I to me as long as i get the emotion right and it's on yeah. pitch i'm cool um you know as long as long as whoever's listening to it believes what i'm saying i'm happy with it but and that's so, like <laughs> yeah i th- i think like you you have so clearly found your thing like dude even with the sound of country music you like i think you sang it through twice <laughs> and we yeah. all knew we were like well that's it we we all very clearly like jeremy jeremy does your stuff right yeah yeah, yeah. <clears throat> like i feel like you guys figured it out like you you yeah well you, thanks man yeah it, it's yeah, we, we've absolutely. done it a long time together which helps and you know i think sometimes it's healthy for for you know guys to to split apart and you, you know you need a fresh this or that but for me and him we're like we can finish each other's sentences and know what each other's you know can look at each other and know what we're thinking and you know that's so valuable, there's, there's a lot of value in 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 that and um but you know in this once we've recorded everything like god bless you guys that like to sit there and move this button and push that and just listen over and over and it drives me insane i'm like dude just send me mixes when they're done and i'll you know i'll listen through very uh uh a lot of times i guess you you would say and and i'll say hey i make a lot of notes and i i want let's try this or I don't like that or whatever. But as far as being in there and actually, you know, doing all that, especially the vocal stuff, I just, I, I can't imagine, but a lot of guys like yourself love it. You know, I, I I'm just know. not a studio rat at, at all. I, I think I'm somewhere in the middle of what you just described. Yeah. I don't know that I love it. Like it does drive me crazy, dude. I heard a story yesterday. Check this <laughs> Billy Jean was mixed like I think it was eighty something time that oh eighty gosh. something versions of a song and they ended up going back to mix number two. I, oh was my god. Number gosh. two or number four. I can't remember exactly. Great great story. I don't even know how it ended. Yeah. But it was something That's, like I've heard I've heard a few of those over the years that they would go in and go in and keep trying and then at the end, they would end up using the first or second one and things like that. Yeah, I, f- I feel like, too, like we've gone in and done that, not 80 times, but... Um, yeah, 80 times. 80 times. I, I, to me, I, I, there was a song earlier in my career. I forget what which one it was. It's not important, but... We cut, we recut the song, like, I don't know, three times or something, and we ended up, of course, going back to, like, the original demo. And I'm like... That's I told y'all that it, that it was right before, yeah. it, you know, you know, somebody was looking for this and somebody's looking for that. And I'm like, I, that's why I just learned. I'm like, man, if the emotion's right. And a lot of times you can, you very rarely beat it is my point. You, yeah. w- there's something special about, I don't know if it's an excitement when a song's brand new to you or I there's just these moments that everything is the way it's supposed to be, even if it's a little wrong, if that makes sense. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, I, like some of my favorite moments in records over the years was the imperfections in them. Yeah. Uh, that to me added character. Goes you know, back like, to that honesty. For example. Thing. Yeah. Wait, for example, it's human, you know, like Waylon yep. coming in on, uh, Lukenbach, Texas, I think it was, or Mamas Don't Let Your Babies Grow Up to Be Cowboys. He comes in like totally off key, like, but they just left it. And I'm like, it just makes you human. I don't know. It's real to me. Yeah. Dude, I I think there's something like, 
something tangible something about that creates the magic man that's what right, i feel yeah. like I, you know music always kind of goes in circles <laughs> so i think we're circling back to the, the real the good stuff you know what yeah. i mean but also to the point of 80 something mix or however yeah, many right. times you go back in to cut it they sometimes you gotta know what it's not to know what it is you know like Mm -hmm. I just got to explore this area point. over here. But and then you realize, no, that ain't it. Let's go yeah. back to that. That's yeah. what it was. Recapturing magic. Yeah. Dude, that's why, yeah. Justin, when you were like, so, talking about as long as you capture the emotion, like that really is it. Dude. That's the magic. Yeah. Yeah. Like, talking about magic, like you, you were mentioning uh, Michael Jackson. I heard, and I don't know this to be 100% true, but I heard all of his vocals on all his albums are all recorded on these SM7s like we're all talking into right here. Oh, no. I heard Michael Jackson only recorded on SM7s. Wow. Wow. I didn't yeah, know random that. fact. Wow, I, I, I don't remember how I got that. Fact, wow, I've recorded I, a lot on on these. I've recorded some on these. My mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. I think my side of the vocal on Sound of Country Music might have been recorded on an SM. Shout out yeah. Sure if you want to yeah. send us some free swag, <laughs> yeah. or free send gear, or free uh, studio equipment to, <laughs> to Scott. There you go. Hey, you mentioned earlier, Scott, uh, some of your musical influences, and um, you had mentioned uh, Hag and, and country stuff and McGraw and stuff like that. And on the podcast, we, we do a lot of times with our guests, we do a thing, the Mount Rushmore of country music uh, or music in general. So if you had to put a Mount Rushmore, your personal, not who you, you know, overall was the greatest artist, you know, everybody would think was that, or maybe they are, but just your personal uh, double. S's top, you know, four or five artists that you would put up on your Mount Rushmore um, next to the Gorilla. To, oh, nice, 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 nice. Uh, man, it'd be tough for me not to say John Prine's up there. John Prine's Ooh. up there for me, man. He's a uh, John Prine, Joe Walsh. God, this is hard, dude. I That's know. when it gets you hard. Is like three and four. You yeah, know, for all of us. Where, where, where? Who's on y'all's? I know the listeners probably know know exactly who's on both of yours. But it's been a while know. since I broke it down, and it changes from time to time. But Hank Junior's yeah. definitely on ours. Oh, nice. Hank nice. for me, Hank Junior, Dwight Yoakam, um, uh, yeah, Waylon, and then that's where it gets tough for me. Yeah. Uh, See, I got to say Hank Sr., but see, I'm a huge Prine fan, too, but I have to say Hank Sr. I was going to say Hank Sr., uh, too, dude. He was in my Jones. consideration. I mean, but then it's like Hag, Waylon, Willie. I mean, I love a bunch of, yeah. you know, and then who you're not going to put straight or Dolly. I mean, it's just, I don't, I can't even think about it. Yeah, hey. I, I don't know. And it, in my fourth, I mean, my, it's probably Charlie Daniels. Quite honestly, yeah, Charlie nice. Daniels or Charlie Pride could, or Alan Jackson. I could make I, mean, so I could make an difference. argument for uh, Patsy Cline. We're just it's incredible. Oh singer. yeah, oh yeah, man. Uh, I don't know. Maybe my maybe my Mount Rushmore is like always under construction on those last like. Those last <laughs> That's <laughs> fitting for you. Exactly. I will give you two, and the other two are under construction. Uh, that sounds about no. right. Well, something else. Something else we do a lot of times uh, with our guest is the number one song, your birthday number one country music song. It's the number one song in country music on the day you were born. Do you have oh. any idea? Oh. Or you're, you're January nineteenth, correct? Uh -huh. uh -huh. Eighty five. Uh -huh. Do you, anybody want to take a step? All right, so for me, I'm nine eleven seventy nine, and my song was Conway Twitty's "I May Never Go to Heaven." And Justin's a three thirty eighty four model, and his song is "Roll On Eighteen Wheeler" by Alabama. So the number one song, January nineteenth, nineteen eighty five, and it's I'll give y'all some hints. It's my favorite song by this artist, and I don't really like a lot of this artist's songs, or not that I don't like. I just this not one of my uh, in my mount anything. Uh, but this is a really good song <laughs> by this artist that I like. Oh my god, I have no idea, bro. And I'll give I you another hint. Okay. They at the time they released Eddie this, Rabbit, they had two Earl Thomas nope. Conley. Nope. They had two. They had. I love a bunch of songs, both of them. Uh, th this person had two names when they started. When they had this, now they go by one name. Oh my, Reba. There you go. Ding ding. Is I want to take a stab at what song it was. When whoever's in New England. That's a. That's a, one of the other ones I like of hers. And my wife's a huge Reba fan. It's one of the few we don't. Because I, I mean, mean, I like it. I just, I don't know. It's just not my jam, really. I mean, it's it, a lot of obviously millions of people do. 
Yeah, yeah. She's she's not waiting on our approval to to. No, don't need yeah, don't get, need. Find my, I'm not the target audience. But <laughs> just you you've heard me say you've heard me saying this with my terrible voice on the bus when it pops up on that classic 808 channel on Direct TV. We listen to a lot. And um, when did Fancy it's the, come out? It's the song that I like of hers, really. And it's not fancy, and it's not Little Rock. Um, that's a, another good one. The song was How Blue. Does anybody remember the song How, I How no Blue? Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. remember that one? That's the yep. that's one. And yep. I, I I think it was on another album by somebody else. But that was that's I love her version of that song and uh, New England. That's a good one too. So yeah, Reba's How yeah. Blue. When you were born, when a baby double S was was fresh fresh to How this earth, that? eyes mm-hmm. barely cracked open. Hey, the number one song of, of the country. I'm just. Uh, I'm sitting here thinking about uh, your birthday and my birthday. Are you sure you're not 37? 37. Oh, you said 36 earlier. That, that sounds about right, dude. They <laughs> run together. <laughs> yeah. I don't, At a don't even know. Point, it I don't, don't even matter. I don't even know which ends up, bro. I got because I'm, I'm my my I'm wife third. also asked me this morning what were our kids' birthdays, and I said, babe, I have no clue. And they're all uh, like back to back in the summer. I don't know, but I bet they're this year. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, you're like, babe. I'm trying to figure out if I want this to be an E or C on this Dude, guitar it, part here. It really album. is, bro. I don't have time it's, for all that. It's one of those things that I I I haven't thought. I mean, that that really is one of those things that that, that they'll let sneak up on you kind of deal. But yeah, how, how many do you have? Three. Three. Uh, three That's kids. what I thought. How old are they? And they are almost five. This is why we had the birthday conversation this morning. Almost five, almost three, and almost two. And things are popping, baby. Oh, it man, is, I bet. It no, is dude. popping over at my house, bro. Don't I know? I know the when feeling. They're all, when they're all mobile on their own and can run fast, about as fast as you can. Now, we're, mine are basically... 12, 10, 8, 5. I've got a, a 7 and 4, but they're about to be 5 and or five and 8. Yeah, Dude, see, but you've gotten to that sweet spot. Like, I, once we get Annie, my youngest, to the point she's not falling on everything and trying to do what her brothers are doing, because that's right now, that's what's keeping us real busy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think that will swivel. Yeah, that's it, dude. Like, parenting is something else, bro. You yeah, know. my brother said it recently. You know. He said, basically, we're just trying to keep him alive because he's trying to do everything to kill himself. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just jumping off stuff. You just got to, I mean, you just, you're just trying yeah, to pad dude. everything and child-proof everything because he's just trying to, his, his best. It is, bro. I'm like, man, y'all, will y'all just stay in the house until, like, everybody's cool? <laughs> uh, hey, well, hey, I don't know if it, it sounds weird to y'all. Sorry to interrupt, but no, you're y'all good. sound like robots to me, and I can't even understand what y'all are saying. What I just just Uh-oh. all of a sudden happened? It's doing that stupid thing. Uh, you got so, me, Scott. Still, I got you both. Yeah, I got both y'all. I'm good. I I don't know. Um, I have no idea. Did you switch my, my your computer's earbuds? Being maybe? a complete asshole. I changed, and it just got worse. Hmm. Well, my com- sorry, my dude. computer is a punk. I got to be honest with you, bros. I was I was starting this uh, the recording session to record at the same time as I'm doing this, and I had very little faith in myself, but it's working. Hey, hey. It's working. <laughs> like everything. So, hey, you mentioned I. So the day after this podcast drops, um, this Friday tomorrow, Friday. Uh, as this drops out, your new album's coming out. Tell us about the new album, the name, where they can find it. Um, and any info like that. And I know I know we're going to make sure to tell everybody, go to scottstevensmusic.com. That's yes. where they can find the home to all of your stuff. Um, because apparently there was a hockey player, Scott Stevens, that yeah. was a very popular guy. Yeah. So uh, added the music to it, which is kind of like Justin's too. So anyway, yeah, back to the album. Uh, album title, Dropping Friday. Cool, man. Yeah, I got a 16-song record that is dropping this Friday, May 13th. 2022 and uh it is available like you said on my website scottstevensmusic.com stevens with a v and uh 
It's uh, what was I supposed to say about it? Anything else? Am I missing That's anything? That's it. It's no, available. We're, 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 everybody can find you can find it everywhere. It's going to be everywhere, bro. Spotify, Every, Apple, all the fun stuff, right? All, all of it, dude. I have been uh, talking about it and promoting it, and uh, it's been it's been like a lifetime coming, dude. It seems like to me. Yeah. That's why I was asking Justin. Like, like I can't imagine. <clears throat> Being that deep, like on a on an eighth studio record, like that's insane to me. As it's taken so long for me to to get this together, and I'm just, uh, dude, you're, you're setting goals, baby. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. Well, so, they always said the the wheels on music road turn mighty slow, but once that train leaves the station, baby, you better hang on. So, dude, that's uh, that's don't, it. Don't blink. You'll be at eight before you know it. That's it, bro. I I I, I will love. I, I will talk about it that day too, man. When, when we get there, Absolutely. but yeah, got this first record coming out and couldn't be more proud. So it's been like my whole journey through Nashville, dude. You know, since since coming to town and being like, you know what, I'm gonna dedicate my life to music in a real way. Uh, and this is this encapsulates it. that that time, that yep. period, that the uh, West. All uh, in. All, all in, in all the chips. Push all, all the chips in. forward. Here we go. All in, baby. It's the sound of country music. Uh, the record. The full album is called Every Hat is a Cowboy Hat uh, uh, with a dot, dot, dot. <clears throat> and uh, the dot, dot, dot is like a, is, is a real subtle Joe Walsh reference, too. But uh, that's just nice. kind of a, an expression I have when I have to do all these things to make everything work. And like, is it country music? Uh, it's country music if I say it is, man. Every hat's a cowboy hat if you're a real cowboy kind of deal. You know? oh, I love it, man. That's awesome, dude. Well, man, well, we're going to let you get back to the studio, get back to let some of them creative vibes flow uh, for the rest of the afternoon, or get somebody out of jail, whichever one you got to hey, do today. Hey. Uh, and be careful out there on radio tour. It's going to be tough, but it'll be fun. Like I said, don't blink. It'll be over before you know it. Uh, get some rest. Uh, love them babies. And uh, stay in touch. And we'll, we'll, as, you know, we'll keep up with you. We've got some shows to do again soon. Uh, like I said, I think we've got one in July. Uh, and then we'll have you back on maybe later in the year and stuff. We can, te- we can see how the ride was from putting an album out to where, wherever you end up here you know, later in the year or something cool like that. Um, but until then, everybody go to Scott Stevens with a V, music.com. And is it Scott Stevens Music on Instagram and Twitter and all that stuff too? Yep, all that stuff, Scott Stevens Music. Find me. Find there me. There you go. There you go. Y'all go holler at our brother, Scott Stevens. Thanks for spending some time with us today and get letting our audience get to know you a little bit. Y'all come see him on the road with us on the Country Own It Tour. Go to scottstevensmusic.com. Uh, today, when you get this, and go ahead and pre-download the album, go ahead and click, do all that stuff, go follow him on Instagram. You can follow out. His stuff's hilarious on Insta. Uh, so, check. Just, you got something over there, brother? Y'all are officially completely silent. I haven't heard anything the last five minutes, so apologies, Scott. But <laughs> sorry, uh, if y'all, dude. can you hear me still? Yep. Um, hey, man, congratulations. First and foremost, is a huge, huge moment I know in your life and career, obviously, um, to, to finally get this out there for people. And I know you got to be extremely excited. And um, man, I'm just really happy for you and want you to know how big a fan I am and and uh, look forward to doing more shows together and hopefully making some more music together. And uh, just appreciate you coming on today, buddy. And you know anything I can do for you, just just uh, don't hesitate. Bro, uh, I know you can't hear me, so well, you'll have to go back and hear this. But <clears throat> JR your can support. translate whatever yeah. this response is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, your support, JR and Justin, thank you both for having me on. But your support, bro, has meant the world to me and my family. Like, I got my kids backstage at your shows, bro. It, uh, it's a dream come true, dude. And, and it feels real good to me for you to say that about my music and believing it that way. And, dude, all the doors that you've, you've allowed to open for me, I'm super grateful for, dude. Well, forever be indebted, dude. Thank you for being on the record. Well, you're the real deal, Scotty boy. That's why that's why he did it, and that's why we do it, and that's why we're all bros, man. Yeah, we'll hold Nashville down until we get back up there. Thanks again for jumping on with us. Y'all go to scottstevensmusic.com. Right now, when you listen to this, go ahead and do it now. Go ahead and link up, have all that fun stuff, and look at some of his videos. You'll get a, you'll get to see what we're talking about his music. His music super vibey, uh, super cool, and definitely country. Uh, I love I call it like trippy country almost, but it's yeah. but it's but it's cool. It's got that 
it's almost kind of to me a little bit like what some of the Texas guys do, like the Paul Cawthon kind of thing, kind of that cocaine country, but yours is kind of more trippy. But it, like just said, the Tom Petty I could see, and I could definitely see the Hag stuff. So I love it. I think a lot of our fans are going to love it too. So y'all go check it out. Thanks to our brother Scott Stevens. Be safe, brother, on that road, and we'll see you soon. Thank you, dudes. Thank you for having me. Thanks, brother. Peace. All right, everybody, that was Scott Stevens. Justin, can you hear me? Nope. All right, we're going to take a pause for the calls and see if we can get Justin Link back up. Y'all uh, stay tuned for a little uh, mention to our sponsors. We want to say thank you to all those guys, as always, for keeping this podcast rolling. Uh, also want to remind you all to go to uh, the Justin Moore Podcast Instagram page. Go ahead and like us on there. And anywhere you're listening to this podcast, hit the like, rate, subscribe button leave us a review all that fun stuff we're going to read some of these reviews on um on the itunes and some of the youtube channel y'all go check us out on youtube if you're listening you can go watch us there not much to look at but it might give you something else to do uh and go to jrthehandler.com you can check out my swag blog all that kind of fun stuff go to justin moore music uh, dot com to check out all the tour dates the links to the podcast merchandise all that fun stuff and we're work we're i know a lot of people been asking me about meet and greet stuff we're cooking some stuff up for that now so stay tuned for some info on that i'm sure we'll blast out on justin's social pages once we figure it out uh, but we will have an option for that soon uh, and want to say thanks to everybody for supporting this co- podcast each and every week uh, so we'll be right back here on the justin moore podcast Today's episode is sponsored by Bobcat. If you're like me, you don't like to sit still for very long. You look out the window and see possibilities. What if I planted a row of trees over there? It'd be nice to clear that trail in those woods. That's why Bobcat equipment is so great. Its compact size, powerful performance, and big-time versatility will keep up with all your ideas for your property. With a few attachments or implements and a Bobcat tractor, for example, you can do big things in small amounts of time. It's perfect for me when I have a break from touring or recording. Take a look at tractors, utility vehicles, mowers, and more at Bobcat.com or pay a visit to your local dealer. Hey, what's up, guys? Justin Moore here. I want to remind everyone out there listening Uh, that my wife Kate has an awesome children's clothing boutique in downtown Benton, Arkansas at Central Arkansas. So if you're local, come see us at 119 West South Street in downtown historic Benton, Arkansas. Uh, Again, that's 119 West South Street in Benton, Arkansas. And if you're not local, we ship everywhere. So uh, you can find us at shopthislittlepiggy.com and see all that we have to offer all that my wife Kate has to offer, I should say. Facebook, you can find us at Shop This Little Piggy AR. And Instagram, you can find us at Shop This Little Piggy AR. But check us out. It's called This Little Piggy. And uh, see what we got to offer. ShopThisLittlePiggy.com. Hi, y'all. This is Brandon Bing, singer, songwriter, and whiskey maker. You're tuning into the Justin Moore Podcast. Visit EasyLiquor.com to grab your bottle of Bangtail Whiskey and join the Blue Collar Swaller family today. Follow us on all socials at Bangtail Whiskey for more news and updates. Now pour Jigger and take this a second ride with us. Hey gang, as y'all have heard, the Just More podcast has recently teamed up with Wrangler. Wrangler has been an icon in authentic American style around the world for more than 70 years. With a rich legacy rooted in the American West, Wrangler commits to offering unmatched quality and timeless design. As y'all have heard me and Justin talk about on here, George Strait, Alan Jackson, they're Wranglers. We wear Wranglers, too. Its collections are also f- for men and women, children, to look and feel great, inspiring those who wear them to be strong and ready for life every day. Wrangler is available in retail stores worldwide, including brand flagship stores in Denver and Dallas, department stores, mass market retailers, specialty shops, Western Outfitters, and online. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. And you know you've heard it here. And you've seen it on stage, the Justin Moore podcast. Dang glad to be partnered up with Wrangler because we're big fans and have been for a long, long time. Can't go wrong with a nice pair of Wranglers, y'all. I wear the Wrangler Retro. Uh, Justin wears the black one some. It's just, it's my go-to. I get mine at Academy. So if you're uh, around an Academy or just about anywhere, you can get you a pair of Wranglers, whether you want to look like George Strait, you want to look like JM, or you want to look like me. You can get you some Wranglers and you can do that. Whether you're in North California or South Alabama or Montana, Texas, Ohio, Wyoming, wherever, pair of Wranglers will get the job done. 
Long live Cowboys and Plowboys. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. All right. Welcome back, everybody, to the Justin Moore podcast. Uh, we had to break out a vintage pair of Justin Mould in-ear monitors from uh, tours long ago to get this podcast restarted, but we are back. Um, JM, can you hear me? Yep, but apparently I've, I've uh, uh, we changed uh, – we retired these because the right one don't work. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> so that might be a good reason why we retired them. There we go. So, we're old but, school, buddy. I'm telling. Do they have anything on them? Do they have a design on them? They got the razor back on them or something? No, no. They're just. That's how old they are. And they have a. Uh, I don't know if you can see. Like they have a little, like metal piece. Oh wow. Metal. I don't ever remember having that. The ever. metal ones. That's Interesting. Weird. So, for those out there who are watching, this is what we wear in our ears during concerts. It's a mold of your, I guess, inner ear. Yeah, or whatever. But your ear, the beginning anyway, of your ear, the opening so. to your ear canal. So, uh, so yeah, what an interesting uh, guy, Scott Stevens. Good to have him on for a little bit today. Uh, talk about his new album. I think uh, I, I look forward to hearing it. And like I said, it's something different. It's really cool. So uh, thanks to him to jumping on, and um, y'all can come see him on some shows with us this year too. So y'all make sure to check him out. Um, yeah. And Justin and I were talking a little yeah, bit. He's an him. interesting cat, man. Yeah, he's he is. just a he's just a different cat. I mean, in, in a good way. I, I yeah. don't mean that badly, but. Yeah, you could see that. It's like if, if if he can get that art out, man. There's definitely all kinds of something going on in that in that jug for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And he must be. I wanted to get into this too. We'd get him back on, but um, I I didn't want to beat him up too much. But he's probably about to do a lot of this stuff. Oh yeah, or, or already is doing. Um, with the album coming out. But uh, did he say? I missed it because it cut out. Did he say fifteen or sixteen songs? Did I miss sixteen? Did I? Sixteen songs wow. on this album, which is. I mean that don't happen anymore. You know, back you when do a we were double album, maybe. You know, back when we were on album two, three, four, maybe something like that. That was somewhat common, but yeah, like off the beaten path. I remember not it had now. a lot of songs on it. Yeah, I think the most we ever put on one was like sixteen or eighteen one time. You yeah, know, but the point being, that doesn't happen anymore. So that's right. that's pretty neat. You know. Yeah, I was uh, – before we got on today, I was actually listening to Late Nights uh, and Long Necks uh, album because I was – Sharice was cutting my hair today, and a song popped up that I was like, man, I almost forgot about this song. Because people ask me all the time, what's your favorite JM song, you know? And usually I'm like, ah, it's hard because albums and live sound so different, and I've listened to you live more than on albums, and, and they're all good. But, right. like, live for the feel – I love when y'all kick in the backwoods. I just I, – that's just a rocker, you know, um, at mm -hmm. the live shows. And I usually – say the newer ones because i haven't uh haven't had haven't heard them as many times as the old ones right. um and beta hook beta hook's the one that brought me to the dance though um but today jesus and jack daniels came on and i thought what a oh, just yeah. what a great country song what just a great standard issue great well written yeah great phonetic sounds i mean just the whole sonic it's just a just a good tune so i came and put the whole record on and I, you know, I still say that that's one of my favorite records. I mean, that's just a, that's just a good overall record. Uh, yeah. And Middle Class Money. Yeah, I always thanks, thought man. that was a really good song. I did too. Was it on that album? Yes. It was a different album. No, that was, yeah, it was on the next album. Whoops, my bad on that. This is one that, that had, uh, Late Nights and Long Nights had Why We Drink, That's My Boy. It's awesome yeah. ones. The ones that didn't make it back that home. That was a good album. Yep. Jesus Jack Daniels, Airport Bar, which I've heard a million people say they love that one. Uh, small town street song, cred yeah. which is cody's favorite song off the album um never gonna drink that again was probably my which, least favorite on the album kind of mine too to be honest with you and cody loves that song yeah but uh, uh well, never gonna drink I mean, again that, that makes sense yeah he's 20 years younger than us um yeah. never gonna drink again which is a great tune um on the rocks someday i gotta quit uh and good times I really don't like that song too I mean that's yeah, ten. That's a good that's, album, man. That's top to bottom, solid ten songs right there. Yeah, um, man, I forgot about "On the Rocks." That was a good tune too. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, it was. Uh, like I said it was interesting talking to Scott and seeing you know uh, someone's angle that's not just you know he's got a different kind of path to get where he's going. But it's uh, it's interesting. Right. I hope I hope people will get on it and like it. I, we were yeah. talking about before we jump back on. Um, I, we're going to try to cut our next podcast for next week's episode, maybe on the road this weekend. Um, so 
we may try to do a bunch of this Q and A um, that we need to. I've got I've been compiling all the Q and A over the last couple of weeks, um, so we may try to do a bunch of that uh, live together in person, maybe somewhere. We've got to go to uh, Everett, Washington, Kennewick, Washington, and Nampa, Idaho this weekend. Um, so maybe we'll find a cool setting, or if the weather's bad, we'll just jump on the bus and do it possibly. Um, yeah, but I you did want to get a doozy of a day as we're recording this. You have a doozy of a day tomorrow. Oh yeah, and I still so for I all the to go, people. Yeah, all all the people who think uh, it's this is all about the glitz and the glamour, and you just give people your day tomorrow, which would have happened yesterday, I guess, if, if you're listening. But yeah, and I hope uh, I'm, just I hope just, that, just yeah, I hope by Give the time them what you're dealing with, what you're looking at tomorrow. Yeah, just for example. The, hopefully, by the time this comes out, everything will have worked out. Um, well, yeah. Well, it started this past weekend. We got up at 4 a.m. on the East Coast to fly home Sunday. Then I drove to Mississippi. Was going to try to get home, but I was too tired to drive nine hours. So I got home last night or yesterday afternoon and got some stuff done. And then today we're doing this, and I've got to cut do yard work after this was going to try to get on the boat but don't think we're gonna have time today uh but tomorrow morning yeah i got to be up bright and early uh leaving the house by about 7 a.m to go catch uh drive an hour to pensacola catch my first flight to dallas uh swap over there have a little breakfast a little uh little bevy maybe um then go to little rock where i will meet you which we will get back on another airplane go back to dallas and then we will go from dallas to seattle with the bus will pick us up and then we'll bus up to to kent or to everett washington so yeah i've got a full full day of travel tomorrow i don't know 20 hours four probably. four flights four flights yeah four flights and i didn't book i didn't and, I, and you know we, we we usually try to sit up in the front just to get the what little bit of comfort you can get when you when you have to um but I didn't book this flight to meet you until late, and there weren't many seats. So I'm in the middle in the back of the plane, and, uh, boy, I'm going to be glad to see you. If I pooper. get to you, we'll be good. Yeah, so uh, it'll be all good. Uh, but, yeah, it's uh, some days are better than others, you know. I mean, you know, not knocking any venues or anything, but some days you're in a venue that's, you know, old and dirty and tired and the water don't work good and this and that. And then the next day you're at the Ritz, you know. I mean, it just, you just never know. It ain't – Yeah, it some, ain't, of the, ain't, some, some of the – some of the showers you you in the band guys get to take are yeah, less they than all I shower do. on the bus now. I think I'm the only one, and the crew does too. The crew has showers on the bus now, so I think I'm the only one that still old schools it in these. I mean, ancient locker room showers. From, now, which you could always use my shower. I mean, which you do I, some. Well, sometimes, but. yeah, but I just I'm always like got my stuff. You know, I, if it's nice, it works out. Like you know, the casino we played this weekend had nice dressing rooms, nice showers. I mean, better shower than I got at home. You know um but then sometimes man yeah you, you just watch any old movie from the 70s 60s 70s or 80s and watch those it's kind of like a little column in the middle of a room in the basement of this building with a couple of shower nozzles on it i mean and it, it might get hot might get cold might not me, get either one i mean i i hate cold showers um that's and me the and you are stand. similar me and you are similar where we i'm sorry no, i said no. me and you are similar like where We'll sit down in the shower oh, yeah. and uh, just sit there for 30 minutes or yeah, whatever. Yeah, I'll just lean like, my head you know against I mean? the wall like, and just lay there and let it just splash on my But some of these neck. places, you you would uh, – some of these places, like we're talking about taking showers in, like you would – you would get some kind of fungus on your ass or something from you know what it's i mean like sometimes it's rough man sometimes pretty, pretty it's gross. rough and you just and i just you know depending on what the day is and i in half time we've got a cleanup room at, at our disposal in case we need it need it and i'm just like you know day gets past me and i'm running out of time and i you know, still got a security meeting and i want to eat and we've got to do this or that and i'm like i just jump in here real quick and the worst is when I, because I'll go in early, and I've asked Nate to do this too. Just go check them to make sure, because you know, there's nothing worse than waiting all day to get a shower, and you 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 allot this 20 minutes, and you got to hurry, and you get in, and it wasn't, it won't get warm, and it's just freezing, and you're like, I got to shower, I can't, and now I'm in here. To, but uh, the opposite of that is when you turn them on, you realize they're they're warm, and you're like, okay, cool, turn it off. Then when you go to shower, you start it's warming back up, and you lather up and then you realize it don't quit getting hot it ain't no cold it's just full till hot <laughs> and it scalds your ass and i had that happen recently to where i was I, the, the nozzles hardly work it wouldn't it, it just that was it it was just gonna be 175 degrees so i'm like literally and i've already got soap so i'll just duck in real quick and do a little bit let my skin quit burning duck in for a minute i mean it's ridiculous <laughs> it, there wasn't no laying around that shower i'd have been out of uh, i should have been standing outside with a 
with uh, some aloe for you or something. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, and it was one of them ones where, of course, usually the venue's so freezing cold, no matter if it's hot, if it's winter or summer, because it's in the bowels of some old ancient building or new building. It's just in the, you know, it's always cold in there because they keep them good and crispy because it's clean when it's cold. But, of course, that one, it was hot in the dressing room, too, so I couldn't even step out and cool off. I mean, it was... I got clean though, you know. That's 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 the thing. But yeah, it's uh, uh going back to that. Yeah, the it, it a lot of it's glitz and glamour. And I tell that I tell that to people when they want to come backstage. You know, I'm like, you know, we we kind of have all this set up to where you can look at it from this angle and it looks good. I said when you come back around all the stuff, we don't dress that part up. You know what I mean? It's really just a bunch of boxes and cables. I say it's kind of like a rodeo backstage at a concert. Watch where you step. You know, because there's stuff yeah. everywhere, and. Um, and you know it goes all the way down to to back in the back of the house too. But uh, but yeah, I got a I got a bit I got a doozy of a day tomorrow. But it's gonna be fun. I look forward to getting out west. Uh, I like touring in the uh, those. It's states. beautiful out that way. That's for yep. sure. Yep. I mean, it's, and, um, it's really pretty. And we, I don't know. Maybe it's my imagination. It feels like we don't get out there very often. We probably do just as much as anywhere else. But it feels like we don't. Yeah, it's I, like I don't once know, or twice a year. <sighs> seems like we get out that way. Yeah. Um, and we're and we're doing the shows with Granger and his bunch again. So and I think Heath's going to be on some of these shows. So that's going to be fun. Um, and yeah, we got we've got a, a couple shows out west: uh, Everett, Washington; Kennewick, Washington; Nampa, Idaho. Um, and then we're going to come back to to Kansas and um, Nebraska and some other states after that. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, it, it, the travel's not easy; never is. But this job's not easy, and it's uh, you know, it's but it's very rewarding. And um, you know, at this point, we figured out hell, I, we're not really qualified to do much else. Uh -huh. um, you know, so this is this is what we <laughs> do. Man, I, I don't. Where were you going with that? I'm sorry, I interrupted you. No, that's all right. Um, I think I you just, were on a path, and I. Well, I was just saying uh, that you know. I, I think it, I it, threw you off course. No, it's all good. I just was just that you know. It, it, it thinks it's all you know private jets and the nicest hotels and this and that and sometimes it is but it's a lot sometimes it ain't you know and it's uh but that's that you're going yeah. we're going to where the people are and that's our business our business to me is not a markets necessarily it's not los angeles and new york no. the, the music southern rock and country music to me is like rural america so we go to these bcd markets uh, mm -hmm. in some of these smaller towns and it's harder to get there and they might not have the infrastructure that some of these nicer places but that's where the real people are to me so yeah i, no, I look forward to going to those I, even though it's it, a it, it seems better it's like yeah we go on you know do you know all these big cities with all this nice stuff and you know all the amenities and whatnot but um, right. the heart of what we do is in rural america so we go to the people you know and these yeah, people don't really have is. these and people don't have a lot to do in these towns sometimes you know they have the harvest festival they, they have the Fourth appreciate of July firework, it and then more. A, yeah. yeah a tour stops through town at the arena ever so often and uh, you know and the parking lot's full everybody's having fun you know the town's making some money you know we get you know we get to meet your yeah. fans you know so it's yeah, tough, it's, a, it's, it's going to be fun. It, yeah. This is the country on it tour we're doing this weekend, correct? With Granger, correct. and we, so yeah, it, it's it'll be fun. And um, just want to say real quick, um, speaking of of Granger, um, man, what a what a pleasure it is to to work with with those guys and his camp, and uh, they they've been awesome, total yep. pros, great show. Um, it's. Um, it's it's fun to be out with with people who you you get along well with and and um it, it, we maybe we I should explain camp because I feel like we use that term a lot and I don't, maybe people don't even know what we're talking about. So we just basically mean you know like I have a team of people we do uh, which would include the band, the crew, <laughs> The merchandise yeah. manager, the drivers, those yeah. myself. So yeah, we we call it you know camp, so and so's camp, Justin's camp, Granger's camp. It, I don't know where that term came from, but that's that's the industry term. So anytime we say that, that's what we're talking about. Um, but to be out with those guys and in, in their camp, they're good, really good dudes. Do it the right way. Uh, you know just just total pros and it's it's a lot of fun you know not that you know scott isn't or right but it you know what scott's not on all these shows that's why i don't mention uh and, and granger is so but uh 
speaking of total pros, I forgot to tell you this completely until just now. I just thought of it. Um, guess who was on the radio show this morning? Who? Famous Arkansan's son. Think John Daly's son? No. No. Music. Musician. Glenn Campbell's son. Think about it. Yes. I, I got Travis. a text. I got a text something about I, while we were talking earlier from somebody something. I didn't read the message, but that's what made me think of that. He said Travis Glenn's son something, and I didn't even yeah. read the text yet. Well, we're going to be in uh, Wichita, well, Park City, but which is basically Wichita. Yeah. Next week. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so he wants to he wants to come out. You know, he's been out to a lot of shows. Yeah. So, uh, him and his wife. Yeah, remember? they're super cool. Him and his wife. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, but yeah, he was in, uh, I guess Basil had met him at a wedding or something uh, oh, okay. recently, and uh, he was in town, and we're talking about Glenn Campbell's son, for, for those out there listening and watching, and, and we've met him, he and his wife, out years ago, they came to some shows of ours, and we, you know, we got to talk to him, and... <laughs> super nice guy and and uh he ended up being on the 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 radio show this morning and just some of the stories man about glenn his dad and i, I asked him i said so i've never been able to ask any child this uh of a musician you know successful touring musician i was like uh am i making my kids hate me because i feel like it, like so i give you i give you the reason why i'm so and I said that tongue in cheek, obviously, but uh, so my oldest daughter Ella had a field trip today to go bowling, and I had talked to her about it on Sunday when we got home or Monday or something. And I said, "You want me to go?" Because I had just gone to Klein's. I think I told you that uh, last week. I had gone to Klein's. We went to like the science museum or something, right? And uh, and I've been on a bunch of Ella's and Kennedy's over the years. And, and so, um, uh, so she's like, dad, really? And I'm like, what? You don't want me to go? She goes, no, it's just embarrassing. I'm like, I, I'm an embarrassment. <laughs> she's like, no, but like people coming up to you, it's like, it's weird. Like, and they just talk about your music. And I'm like, I'm like, so you don't, so you don't want to fish that? So you which, don't want your daddy to uh, go? You know, with I'm you? like, so you, so you don't want me to go with you? Uh, I was like, okay, I get it. Aww. So anyway, I, it kind of hurt my face. She didn't mean it that right, way, right? Right. I know what she means. Yeah. Like, like the, the 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 group of kids that she's not friends with, or we don't know them well. See them know, all the time. Yeah. The the kids on the peripheral, who just know me as a singer. Right. You know, they'll be like, oh, my dad likes your song, or I, I love Backwoods, or I, you know, what, yeah. which is sweet, but it embarrasses Ella in particular. The red, you know, Kennedy could care less, whatever. Right. Um, Ken will just go, hey, Corey, I'm just making a name up. Shut up. It's just my dad. Shut up. Go over <laughs> there, or whatever, you know. Yeah. Um, but so, anyway, it was kind of like, uh, okay. It was it was one of those moments too. It was like, it probably wasn't because I'm her dad and she don't want me around because she's getting older. Or maybe it could have been. I don't know. I think it legitimately was because of you know what I do for yeah. a living. But it was it was kind of like, oh, my babies. She don't really want me around around anymore. Any, yeah. She's got friends now. She doesn't need me. Yeah. It, but I asked Glenn to, to circle back. I, I or Glenn. I asked uh, Travis. I was like, "Were you embarrassed by your dad? Like, do you, do, do you now appreciate him and or were you like wishing that he would have had a normal job? You know, it kind of gave yeah. me a complex. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what did he say? But he said uh he said no. He said, you know, Obviously, there was sacrifices that, you know, the kids had to make, uh, but they had opportunities, which is kind of what I always think, at least in my mind. Um, but I'm not a kid of somebody do it. You know, I, right. I just thought it was an, 
it would be a good perspective for me to get his his perspective and so he said you know we had so many opportunities uh because of my dad's talent and that you know i got to i mean he's telling stories almost like in the same vein as hank jr you know of uh you know being at the house and uh, you know their house and it's you know elvis or something yeah yeah elvis and james brown and you know whatever um you know the biggest stars you can imagine in music And, and and glenn really unlike even some of those other guys um with the exception of maybe Johnny Cash, uh, but like even like a Waylon or a Willie, or they may not be good examples. But Glenn knew every genre of people in every genre, and oh, they yeah. respected him. I'm sure for his country career, but more so for I mean being a part of the Wrecking Crew. Right. Yeah, he was I mean, a world famous. For those out player. there that yeah. I know you, yeah, I know yeah. you obviously know and forgotten more about this than i'll ever know but so for those out there listening though the wrecking crew was uh a group of musicians in la what 60s mm-hmm. i guess jr yep and they played on 60s and 70s like literally every record yep. every genre i mean from motown to uh uh I don't know. You can help me yeah, out here. I but mean, I, it, I mean, it's it. it, so he was well respected at the time for that. And I, hell, I wanted to say a lot of that was him playing bass, wasn't it? Or was it guitar? Uh, guitar. Too? Guitar. Okay. Oh, the, the, the female was the bass player. Yep. yep. She yeah, that's right. the most And has some of the most legendary licks ever. If you guys care about that kind of stuff, and I'm assuming you're music fans if you're listening to this. There's a really great documentary that I, I think you and I watched it together on the bus. I don't know what it's called. It's but called The Wrecking Crew. Go watch it. I don't know yep. if it's on Netflix or what it's on, but it's really, really good. And if you're just kind of a, a music nerd like we are, you, you would really enjoy it. It'll blow it, your I, mind, I really. Yeah, and it, Wrecking and Crew. And it, you, you'll learn a lot more than you, you even think you will. I mean, it's yeah. just pretty pretty neat but anyway i meant to mention that and so he wants to come to the show next week so oh good we'll get to see him yeah maybe we'll um maybe we'll talk to him and line up (laughs) on the podcast sometime yeah we should absolutely he was really well spoken and articulate and he's a he's a fun he'd be a fun guest to have so maybe we could do that yeah super nice guy you know talking about that and being respectful and 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 things like that uh i was gonna put this out here as our our behind the curtain a little info for uh, fans that go to country shows you know from time to time we go out and watch um whoever's playing whether it be before or after or wherever in the lineup um, but we'll go side stage and watch uh, the other acts play if we can if time allows and we you know our obligations we can get out there we'll watch a few songs of granger every night and and a lot most artists uh, we ever do shows with and somebody a lot of times will come down near where we are side stage and ask about getting a picture while the other artist is playing and this is just like the, uh, I guess not a public service now, a concert service announcement, we'll call it. Well, we always um, try to keep you guys informed on what's what what's the right thing and the wrong cool thing and what's to not do. Cool, yeah. and what, you know, and so. But when that goes down, it's not that we, Justin doesn't want to get a picture with you or, or anything like that or doesn't want to acknowledge you and things like that. It's that we're, that's disrespectful to the person playing while they're up there singing, they're doing their art. And then over here is flashbulbs going off with someone not watching the art that's being performed. So that's just not a very good time to try to get pictures and stuff is when you're when you're trying to pay attention. You're trying to actually listen to the song and then somebody scream behind you, hey, 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 or trying to get the security guard to get your attention and stuff like that. So there's other places and times that that's going to happen. Like I'd mentioned before the break that we are going to have some kind of meet and greet stuff lined up here soon that everybody's going to have access to. <laughs> um, but side stage while someone else is playing is just not cool. That's, that's disrespectful to the artists that's playing. And it, it makes it the, like Justin, if he did take the picture, it makes it look like he's disrespecting the artists that's placed right. taken away from their show. So it's just, that's just it's not a, the way to it's go a, about it's it. It's a, it's a no, no, you know, in our industry, um, and I'm not and sure. If you're how a security guard, definitely not. Had that happened twice yeah. in West Virginia, which absolutely is a no. I don't think you're, that's ever happened in my career. 
the uh, the the security guards. This is what I explained to two different ones. Don't if your eyes are not, that. if your eyes are watching him trying to get his attention, they're not watching out for. You're not doing your happening. job. You're not doing your job. You're, we're looking for you. Every set of eyes is an opportunity to stop something bad from happening. Yes. So we need everybody to be on point on that stuff, and that's how everybody everybody gets to go home safe and happy. It's because everybody everybody's doing their job. Me, you, the security yeah. guard, the ticket counter, the popcorn people, the, everybody, the guy backstage, yeah. everybody has to do their job for everybody to have fun and get home safe. So it's not that I wanted to be mean yeah. to you. It was just that do your damn job. It's what you got to do. You you know, been there. Well, yeah, and and we tell you these things because. I don't want anybody ever thinking I'm being rude or I don't appreciate. I mean, I, Jr., you've never seen me say no to anybody for a picture just at the appropriate time. Right. Like I, I've never no. just gone, no, I don't feel like it today. I, never, and I never will. I just, I've never done that, and I never will do that. I mean, even quite honestly, when I want to, I'm at, I, I don't know, dinner with my wife and children. And people come up to me, I get up and I put my napkin on the plate and I, you know, yeah. I, I remove myself from hanging out with my kids and being a normal dad. And when I do crawl, it because when you crawfish are getting cold, you're trying to leave the yeah, restaurant. It, yeah, exactly. Um, so my point is I would never do that. Um, I mean, I'll make myself uncomfortable to make somebody else comfortable if that makes any sense. But the coming up while somebody else is playing is it's just not going to happen, and it's it's certainly not to be rude. Here's what ha here's what happens if look in this case it was Granger's on stage where you know, and this could be at a festival, and we could be standing out front at the soundboard if anybody knows what that means. This may be too insider, I don't know, front of house, uh, and. You come over and you think, well, it's not a big deal. Why do you say no? It's because I don't want Granger looking out there seeing me do it because he's gonna be like, "What the heck, bro?" Yeah, like, he's going there I mean, just to he would never do that. He would, but it's just you just don't do it. You just you just don't, don't do it. I mean, it'd be like me just getting up on stage and walking across the stage while he's on stage playing, right. waving at the crowd. You try not to create a distraction. Like I want him to have his moment in the sun. Yep. You know, and all and attention everybody's be, on be attention on him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, anyway, that just so you guys know, it's, it probably sounds like we're coming down on people. I don't. I, I just want you guys to be made aware of exactly why. If you're say, if you know, if you're told no, and we appreciate the enthusiasm certainly, because um, the people who asked, I mean, they were just excited, and I totally get that, and, right. and I'm thankful for it. But just know, it's it's more about being respectful to to another artist than it is we don't want to take a picture i mean we've taken millions of pictures over the years and we'll continue to do that so right. just so you know and that's and that uh, and that's back that up. and that's back and that goes along with too like the stuff like throwing stuff on stage or holding something up the entire song like i've seen you catch eyes with somebody and point like i'll come back and get it but they yeah. still hold something up and it's distracting people <laughs> around them so little things like that it's not to be mean it's just I want everybody to know the right way to do stuff and it's it makes it funner for the whole crowd as far as throwing stuff on stage let's say you throw uh your ball cap up on stage or your boot or whatever i mean it's a terrible idea because here's what's going to happen we didn't see who threw it up on stage i didn't see you didn't see and 99.9 percent .9 of the cases yep and here's what happens when you're on stage, whether JR comes out, I sign it, or whether I sign it and I'm trying to hand it back. If you think you're the, if it's your hat or your boot or whatever, if you think you're the only one going to be going, that's me, that's mine, that's mine, yeah. you're right. absolutely mistaken. Yeah. Everybody in that section is going to be saying, that's mine. And we don't know who's mine is. And if I throw it back that we way, didn't, somebody we, else know grabs I mean? it. Y'all start fighting and arguing yeah. over it. the security. So it's a good way to lose to your. Out. It's a good way to lose your favorite baseball cap right. or whatever. Right now, I'm if just, I come, if and you I, grab I, it again, I don't give a crap to sign. That, that don't bother me yeah. a bit to sign. I'm, I'm happy to sign whatever. I just signed a guy's arm. He got it tattooed. Yeah, right. I mean, I'm happy to do whatever. But I'm just telling you, if you like that hat, 
don't throw it up there. And right. if you want that, if you want a pinch of snuff, uh, about four or five songs in, and song two, you think you want to throw it up there? Not a good idea. Not a good idea. You're gonna be you're gonna be Jonesing. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, yes, just absolutely. don't do it. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and Granger like the other night. As a matter of fact, the other thing is, it, it seems silly, but things like boots. He got hit right in the chest or yeah. throat with a boot, like a men's cowboy boot. Right. Like that somebody hurled from thirty yeah, yards you, away. Yeah, from yeah, from forever. Not, and nobody had intention on hurting him, I'm sure. But he turned around and it just boing right off his chest or throat or something. It's just yeah. not a good idea. It's not I got a good idea. Yeah, and then you go to th- and then you throw it up there, sign it. I go to throw it back in the area of the person it was. Well, it hits a kid, something like that. It's just um you know, the best way is if you, if, if I come grab it, hand it to him or if you get it there, there but yeah. to throw in the stuff and like Justin said, you you might not get it back. It's going to cause a, a, a ruckus, so um it's just not always. And you the, mentioned it too. Yeah. You brought up a good point and we've talked about it on here. If you, I wish every fan that comes to a show could listen to this part of the podcast. But if you're on any row, I'll probably see you, especially if you're holding up a sign. But if you're on like the first, if you're in the pit, I promise you, I will instantly see your sign. And if I look at you and go, "Yeah, got gotcha, you," put the, put it down and enjoy yourself. Right. Stop holding a sign up all. Day. And it's distracting to me too. Yeah, quite honestly, like it just, you know, especially if you know I, it, you're like I know you know I've seen it. Just continuing it to hold it. I'm yeah, not if I stop acknowledge the song it, I get it and say it. I get if I don't acknowledge you, but if I acknowledge it and I try to do a good job of that, you know, I, this is my son's first concert or it's my birthday or it's our anniversary. I try my best to go around and acknowledge it so that y'all can just chill, put it on the floor. Or whatever, and yeah. enjoy yourself. I know yeah, your well, damn arms got to be getting well, tired. And I think about stuff like this too. It's like you know, if you stopped and acknowledged every one of those and said "Happy birthday to you," have to do all that stuff. It's kind of like when they used to say about um, um, Van Halen. They said they like some people like David Lee Roth when he do his antics and his talking and st- stuff. But the other people said, "Well, if we wouldn't talk so much, we could have heard two more Van two more Van Halen songs." So it's kind of like that too. If you sit up there and do that for. A, that's taking a song away from everybody else in the house. That's a song you could have sang instead of having to, uh, you know, break and do 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 all that stuff. So it, it takes away from that too. So uh, just want, like you said, just want everybody to have all the knowledge they can to be a successful and fun uh, country music concert outing. Speaking of fun um, camps and outings and stuff, we had our, our brother, Mr. Tracy Lawrence, on last week, which was a good convo and hang with Tracy as always, the, the king of country swag. Um, uh, so, and he, he definitely knows all these, all the stuff we're talking about. He's been, he's been doing it and hearing him tell his stories about this kind of stuff is <laughs> hilarious. But, uh, I was going to go through real quick. Like I said, I would do last time and, um, go through the YouTube comments on the YouTube page from the Tracy Lawrence episode real quick. And then we're going to, uh, call it a day. Cause, um, uh, I've got that travel schedules. We were talking about the pack four. Um, first one I got here is Karen Warren says, love the podcast today. Tracy Lawrence was really interesting. Love him. Thanks, JR. Justin Moore podcast. Uh, Larry Baker, can't wait to see you perform in Kennewick, Washington on the 13th. I've wanted to see you play for 10 years. Number one fan right here, Justin. Thank you. That was Larry Baker. Going to be at our show uh, this weekend in Kennewick, Washington. Uh, our old buddy Ryan Penrose, uh, love this podcast. If you – and TL or Dwight recorded a new song, that'd be awesome as it gets. Uh, do you have any other dream collabs? I feel like I've I've heard, uh, and then he says, let's go fishing. I hear you, Ryan. Um, I feel like I've heard you been asked that a few times, um, dream collabs, and I know Dwight's one. <clears throat> any other dream ones you can think of just quickly off the top of your head? Uh, Leanne Womack. Oh, yeah, there's a good one. Um, I might make that happen on the next record. Uh, Susan R., longtime listener, uh, she says, Tracy is one of a kind. Uh, love when he is on notice. Uh, you will be with Craig Morgan at Daytona. He would be an awesome guest. Yep, no doubt. I watched the Opry Live special with JM, BG, and Craig a couple of years ago. It was truly amazing. Have a great weekend, everyone. Um, Lucas uh, Schnedeker 
says, still haven't been able to make a show. Planning on going to see the one up in Mankato, Minnesota on the 21st. I've tried to see two different shows. The first one was Country Fair here in Illinois, and it got rained out. The other was to see Justin and Tracy in Champaign, Illinois, and that was 2020, so we know why that one didn't happen. Still a big fan. The podcast is always awesome. Thanks, Lucas. Uh, Weston Sauls, uh, we're headed to your concert in Knoxville. I cannot wait. You've been one of my favorites. My mom says my whole life I've been – learning your songs and singing them at the Wrangler camp since I could play guitar. That's awesome. Hope you had fun, Weston. Um, Gary Pedigo, great podcast. COVID screwed <clears throat> screwed us from seeing JM and TL in Denver, but I'm keeping an eye on the tour list to see if you guys come back to Colorado. I've seen you guys a couple of times, and my boy is whining. I haven't taken him. <clears throat> I'll have to take him to the next one. Also, really appreciate come you. On. It also really appreciate you guys supporting law enforcement. It feels like a lot of artists are distancing. Um, yeah, always, Gary, we back the blue. Thank Which you for pathetic. your service, bro. I agree with you, and it's pathetic. Yep. Uh, Dora Woody, she's always comment. Appreciate you, Dora. God bless. Love you, Justin Moore and Jr. <laughs> Tracy is an awesome singer. I have to agree. He's one of my favorites. Uh, Joanna, great show. Uh, love it. Um, Ali Hassan, mm, don't can't can't make out this language so don't know that one uh julie peters omg <laughs> i just love you guys long story short thank y'all so much thank you julie uh matthew taylor best podcast out there um uh, it's up there thank matthew you, i agree we're gonna let's go this the award-winning podcast is yet to win an award but we're working on it brother um <laughs> niles blue hey guys love you but i have a bone to pick been trying uh -oh. to figure out a way to message you guys without having social media and it's damn near impossible live in los angeles and came to the show in ontario last year and had the best time but for people who don't have social media it would be awesome if you had another way to connect <sighs> listening to the podcast religiously and love everything you guys do and i know you don't love social media i wanted to send a video of y'all to y'all of me djing jm at my local venue sorry it's if this sounds demanding or anything, but love a way to connect without having to go through the Instagram or whatever, roll them easy. Uh, Niles, I think I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, appreciate it, Niles. Yeah, that was fun in Ontario. We love coming out to Cali too. Um, I would say if you, the, I know one way for me is go to jrthehandler.com and on my message page, that's, that's not um, uh, on a social media platform and you can send me messages on that. Um, and that's just through. Also, you know, don't we have browser. an email for the podcast i thought we had you know, an email but i could we be wrong. do and i need to figure that out um cody and i were actually talking about that the other day on something else but we do we should have an email address that these questions go to we might actually start using that more um <clears throat> and i still want everybody to hit us up on instagram and twitter using the hashtag justin more podcast but we that's a good <laughs> idea and um i will find that out and i'll get the uh i will announce the email address next time so that gives you another option but for now like i said you can go to jrthehandler.com and on my chat room thing there you can send me messages directly there and i'll check them um brandon weiss uh if i'm pronouncing that right sorry guys y'all know me uh talking about the downfall downfall of the country music award shows my grandmother goes to bed at 10 p.m whenever it is new year's eve or whatever the occasion except for a few nights of the year and that was to watch the award shows she has lost all interest within the last few years yeah unfortunately brandon that's uh that's something we we keep hearing more and more but uh yeah. maybe they'll listen and put country country artists on country music shows uh, <laughs> here's another one um in a language i can't decipher but it's got hugs and kisses and roses and um stuff so i'm sure it's either spam or somebody really loves justin more music um let's see how I pronounce this. Benny Boy, uh JM, I'm a huge fan. When you come back to Hershey, I want to see you so badly up here in PA. Ben. So yep, Hershey. Uh we we were talking about that today. We actually played in Pennsylvania. We were on the east coast of Pennsylvania, yeah. not in the Midwest, as we as we learned. Yeah. But um Hershey Thank you, PA man, for the compliment. Uh, yeah, that's where the uh that's where the Hershey PA song comes or part of the song comes in um the Hankett song is uh yep. doing you tour. That was the first tour we did with him. We were up there in one of the first I don't know, a handful of shows, yeah. Yep. The the and I and I've, <laughs> I've got one more well, I'll say it for next week. 
I'm, I'm going to do all these I've gotten off Instagram and Twitter and on my um, JR the Handler chat page and all that fun stuff. We're going to do all those. We're going to try to do a live one together maybe on the road this week and just do a whole bunch of Q&A because um, mm-hmm. we've got some yeah. cool guests we've talked to about some stuff for, for some next weeks after that. Um, so maybe we'll just do that. But as always, <clears throat> thank you guys for tuning in to the Justin Moore podcast. This would be this will be season four, episode thirteen, uh, when it's released. And uh, we appreciate y'all always tuning in and uh, supporting this podcast. And remember to use the like, rate, subscribe, uh, <clears throat> notification button. Leave us a review. Uh, five stars we sure appreciate it uh, leave a review on there too and uh, tell us why you like the podcast the questions comments any of that fun stuff use the hashtag justin moore podcast i'm jr the handler on instagram and twitter uh justin is justin cole moore on instagram and twitter um, and as we have talked before we are currently um getting some details worked out we may be on one of the new hot social media platforms that everybody's aware of uh, here real soon. So we'll drop the info on that. I want to tease that one more time before we actually done. We're hoping within the next two weeks we'll have that and our new meet and greet system lined the, up. Yeah, the meet and greet stuff too. Yeah. Uh, within the next two weeks. I had some great talks with Cody <clears throat> driving home yesterday. Uh, two hours we talked um, coming home about work stuff. So hopefully we'll have that all. He told me it's cool <clears throat> to mention it because hopefully we're going to have that all sussed out in the next two weeks. Um, but until then, use Instagram and Twitter, JR the Handler, Justin Cole Moore, hashtag Justin Moore Podcast. Go to justinmoremusic.com. You can get all the info for the tour, albums, merchandise, all that stuff on there. What you got, Jay? I was just going to say, uh, we, I forgot to mention, um, or we didn't forget, we weren't with you last week prior to, but I was going to say happy belated Mother's Day to all yes. the moms that listen out there, um, I yes. know I'm. We're a few days behind, but I uh, hope you had a great Mother's Day. Yes, yes, definitely. And um, did you get the thing? I, I know I sent it to you every week. Chris Lee, Granger's tour manager's take on Mother's Day. <laughs> I sent to you. And yeah, Pete. but I didn't get to actually watch it. Oh, it's pretty funny. Was it ridiculous? <laughs> yeah, he's, Maybe he's we so, could get Chris on. Uh, that would be great next week. I mean, because we'll be together. I mean, yeah, but he's hysterical. Yeah, that'd be fun. I know I told him that the other day. I said something about a friend of mine, Boyd, uh, Clay Walker's tour manager. Uh, he had said they had they they didn't really know each other, but they had talked on social media a few times. And I was, I Boyd had called me, and I was saying, uh, I, t- I was telling Chris that I was te- I was telling Chris when I was talking to Boyd that I had told him, I said, yeah, he's funny as all get out, and I said he's even funnier in person. And Chris kind of looked at me. I'm like, well, not mean you're a funny looking guy or anything. I mean, just your mannerisms and stuff. You're just a funny. You're just a funny cat, even when you're being serious, you know. Um, so yeah, that would be fun. But it was pretty good. So yeah, go definitely. watch his video. But I don't know where you can find it. Uh, uh, TikTok but, or Instagram. You know, I kind of went on a rant about the ACMs or CM. I don't remember which show yeah. it was. Um, they're all the same. But uh, I don't. Know, this was two months yeah. ago or something. Um, and uh but he did one after the cmt awards <laughs> more comedic it wasn't oh, like yeah. mine but it's i mean it is so so good so i don't know where you can find that or what his name or it's, handle is or whatever on there but if you can if you can go look at it, it's it's i mean it's so spot on and hilarious yeah. i believe it's chris lee country on all his stuff um youtube uh twitter you can probably find it under Granger's but it might be YouTube fun to stuff. get him on if, yeah if, if he wants to jump on yeah because he like you said it's he's it's a it's for comedy but he does it deadpan like he's serious so it's uh yeah but yeah, um it's, it's so but so we we should have all that worked out yeah that'd be cool if we can get him on but we'll have all that stuff worked out so y'all make sure to go to <laughs> justinmoremusic.com com and check that and if you and and again happy belated mother's day to all the mothers out there you know none of us would be here without y'all and uh, if you didn't get your mother a Mother's Day present, not too late. Um, go to justinmoremusic.com. Go to the merch page there. Get her a nice little uh, something for a lady or, or, or something you Ooh, think she would. lady. For the ladies. Uh, get her something from there or go to jr, jrthehandler.com and get her a handler shirt. Um, they they never go out of style, you know. I mean, they're just timeless, like like Justin's music. So, yeah. um, so y'all get them one of those now. And uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, that was fun today, Justin. Glad we got to catch up with Scott. Uh, yeah, y'all check Scott's sure. new album Congrats out, again, dropping man. tomorrow. Um, ScottStevensMusic.com. That's Stevens with a V. I want to say shout out to our brother Tracy Lawrence for coming on the podcast last week. Um, y'all go check him out on the road somewhere. Come see us on the road. We're, we're going to be all over the country this year again, and uh, we've got more dates to be announced. So if we're not, if you don't see a date for your city, 
um, let us know you want us to come there, and we'll we'll definitely try to work on it because I know we've got some 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 spots to fill. And uh, y'all tune back in next week to the podcast. Hope we'll have some fun stuff for you guys. Um, and yeah, good run, good times, always. That was fun. Thanks again to, uh, to like you said, Scott coming on and TL a couple weeks ago, and uh, we'll see you guys in Washington. In Washington, that's right. Uh, here in a in a, a day or so. So yep. thanks guys this, for tuning in. Yep, this week the 12th will be in Everett, Washington, the 13th, Kennewick, Washington, the 14th, Nampa, Idaho, the 19th, Park City, Kansas, the 20th, Ralston, Nebraska, the 21st, Mankato, Minnesota. Then we're going down to Augusta, Georgia on the 27th, Daytona, Florida on the 28th, and Pompano with Beach, Keith. Florida with Toby Keith on the 28th. Um, and then on the 29th, we'll wrap the month up down in Pompano Beach, Florida with our old buddy um, – um, Oh, gosh, just lost his name, uh, promoter buddy. But anyway, uh, Larry Richter, a dear friend promoter down there, going to do a show at the Pompano Beach Amphitheater. The Pompano Amphitheater down there is going to be really fun on the 29th. That's a Sunday. Uh, I know there's a few tickets left for that, so y'all go get them. Uh, but until then, this was the Justin Moore Podcast. Thank y'all for supporting us. Go on everywhere and like, rate, subscribe, click, all that fun stuff, and we'll see y'all next week. This episode was brought to you by Bobcat. Check them out at bobcat.com. For any of you first-time listeners out there, at the end of each of our episodes, uh, I like to do a little reading out of a book I've had that I've got a lot of use out of over the years. Uh, the book is by Mr. Charlie Daniels, uh, and the book is called Let's All Make the Day Count, The Everyday Wisdom of Charlie Daniels. Number 46, Self-Confidence versus Conceit. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed that he does not fall. Corinthians 10:12. Self-confidence and conceit are two different things. Self-confidence is the assurance that through the talent, experience, familiarity, and ability, you can handle a certain situation or perform a certain task. Conceit is many times a false confidence based on competitiveness, braggadocious, and bluster that when put to an actual test often falls far short of the mark. Conceit can lead the tongue to write a check that the mind and body can't cash. Self-confidence is short on talk and long on action. Conceit is the antithesis. Self-confidence gladly shares the credit while conceit wants it all. A self-confident person is content with just being one of the crowd. A conceited person wants to be the center of attention. Self-confidence is patient, fiducious, meticulous, and takes the time to develop a plan of action that stands the best chance of succeeding. Conceit rushes blindly forward impatient and careless, more concerned about being first and leaves many details unaddressed. Self-confidence is humble and takes success in stride. Conceit is self-aggrandizing and wants to be recognized. True self-confidence is gained by being honest about the amount of talent God gave you, knowing your limits and boundaries and willingly accepting the outcomes. Conceit never acknowledges the boundaries and limitations. Humility and honest effort go hand in hand with progress. Let's all make the day count.